Okay, this is a tutorial to give some tips about how to use iPhoto. All right, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find iPhoto. There it is. And I'm going to open it up. Now, iPhoto is a great program. It uh, can store tons of photos. It has the ability to make uh, albums and everything. And uh, here it's already grabbed a memory card that I have uh, plugged into the computer. So I'll just start here since that's what it did. Uh, anytime you plug in a memory card or uh, a phone or camera, um, up here is going to be the pictures that are already in your iPhoto. You can click to view. Uh, this memory card looks like there's 276 pictures on this memory card that uh, are already in the computer. But here are some videos that are not. Now, I can just say to import those five. It calls them photos. You can see their videos. I could decide just to import one. I'll grab this 18 second one and then you can put, put import selected and it will import that. Then it asks you if you want to keep it on the card or delete it from the card. I usually keep it on the card and format the cards uh, in the camera. And uh, so there we have the video. It looks like there was a bug on a flower that I decided to, um, to import. So there's last import. Um, that gets changed every time you do an import. So I usually deal with that right away by uh, creating a folder and as you can see I have tons of folders all down here and I have merged several uh, libraries and um, and so this is my mega album all right now photos is where all the photos are all right this is the I kind of call it the photo bin or the photo bucket it has every photo um, that I've ever put in here and as you can tell it is a lot of pictures all right and up here you'll see that there's uh, 51,000 photos in my iPhoto library. I've never had a problem with iPhoto choking uh, in the last few years as the iOS has improved and its memory has improved. Um, you'll see that each one has a name. If you click here, you can highlight them all. If you just want to move them all, um, you can actually rename it. And, uh, and then you can use this arrow to close it. And uh, so sometimes it's helpful to kind of look at this and, and, uh, and actually name them. I uh, don't do it for all of them, but I do it for a lot of them. Now, anything you delete from the photos is going to disappear, and it's going to go into your trash. So you can see here, here's a bunch of photos um, that I have deleted, or I didn't need them, or they were bad pictures. And then every now and then, you're going to want to um, purge your trash, and you can hit empty trash. You can see I have 5,766 photos um, in my trash, quite, quite, quite a bit of pictures. All right. So, um, I'll delete, uh, those at some time when I want to save some space, but if you delete from photos, that's where they go. And then for albums, there's two ways to add things to an album. All right. The first way, here's a picture of Tom Bump. Uh, say I decide I'm going to make an album. Well, let's say we're going to make an, an art of waterfalls. I can go over here and I can scroll down um, let's see, where is it at? I don't do it this way very often. Okay, I think you go up to the top here. Yeah, and do new album, and I'm going to call it Waterfalls. Now you notice Tom was highlighted, so <laughs> he ended up in there. Um, if I delete from this album, it's only taking it out of the album. It's not taking it away from photos, and you can see uh, that picture still there. So I can simply uh, highlight these waterfalls, and I can go down to the bottom here and I can stick them all in there and there they all are by clicking on it. Now keep in mind if you delete an album like a picture in an album, say I decide these two look the same and I decide to delete that one, it takes it out of the album but it does not remove it from photos. You'll see that that duplicate is still here. All right? You also need to know that, um, let me put that back in the album, let's suppose you decide to edit it. All right, you open this up, you hit edit, and there's lots of cool options under quick fixes. Uh, you can straighten it if your camera was crooked. Um, you, you can crop it um, if you want. You can uh, fix red eye, you can enhance it. Um, that's kind of an automatic. There's effects where you can have a little more control. Say I decide to make this sapia, and then I'm gonna um, lighten it a little bit. I'm gonna do, have a little fun with it. I don't like that, I'm gonna turn it right back off. And uh, if I, I can, let me do some control Z's, can undo everything that I've done. I'm back to the beginning. So let's say I make it sapia 
And in Just, you can do a lot of cool things with the lighting. Um, we can do contrast here. You can do saturation, remove shadows. Just Those are fun to play around with. But here's what I want to point out. Now, when I go back to my Waterfalls album, you'll notice that it is um, sepia. And if I go back to Photos, it's also sepia because uh, I have altered it. Now, had this been in several other albums, it would... Um, it would change in those other albums, and that's important to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this photo, and I'm going to go up to Photos here, and I'm going to tell it to revert back to Original. It says, are you sure? Because all your editing's gone. And it's back to Normal, and it's back to Straight. Now, what if this is in an album? Let me go down to uh, Waterfalls, and I want to mess. I want to edit it, but I don't want to mess up a copy of it in other folders. Well, then I'm going to go up to Photos, and I'm going to say Duplicate this photo. All right. That way I can edit this one and uh, I can change it to, um, let's say we'll make this one black and white and, uh, and I want to put a nice um, uh, matte uh, finish on it. And uh, so there we go. I think that looks cool and I go back. Um, this one will still be in the other albums. This one will only be edited in this album. All right. So hopefully that's... Um, that makes sense to you. Um, another important thing to under about, understand about iPhoto, if you haven't caught on yet, these pictures are not duplicates. They're not copies. When you put a picture in an album, you are merely making a reference to the originals that are in here. So um, if I, um, you know, when I put this into an album, in fact, I'll show you the other way to do it. It doesn't make a copy of it. Your hard drive doesn't use up more space. It basically tells that album to display this. But here's the other way you can do it. You can hit Add To, you can hit Album, and it'll pause, it'll load them all. And then here is all the albums listed this way. Uh, right at the top, I can just create a new one. It's already there, and I'm gonna call this Yo Bear um, because I take a little bear to Yosemite and take pictures of them for my son, and I can make a Yo Bear album all right if I go if I go back to photos and yo bears right there see I can um, I can add him to the waterfalls so he's in both of these but there's not three copies of this picture on my computer there's only one copy so just to reiterate that means if I take this photo in photos and I edit it let's say I uh, crop this one and uh, decide you know it look better like this um, that change is reflected both in the waterfalls. You even saw it change there, and it's changed there, all right? And same thing here. If I do revert to original in this album, it's going to revert it to original in the other albums and back in my photos. There it is. So it is um, back to the way it was. So albums only reference pictures in the main photo bucket. Now, here's another tip. Let's suppose that you are, um, go like uh, with Yosemite here, um, these got loaded in because they're part of my uh, photo stream, but let's say you have a big event and you would like to um, not clutter up your iPhoto. Uh, Maybe you don't want to have 50,000 pictures. Well, there's a cool little trick that a lot of people don't know. I'm going to close iPhoto and uh, it's going to do a little work here because it makes notes of what you did and what you changed and it, it saves them all. But you can actually have multiple iPhoto libraries. And the way you do that is you go down to iPhoto and you hold down the Option button and then click iPhoto. And then you can release once it appears. And you'll see here I've got multiple iPhoto libraries. All right, One of them is uh, Family Picks that were mailed off and scanned. Um, there's one for a Speedstacks project I was working on. This Sarah one was probably a, a gift I was doing for her. But I think I have one that's Luke and Cars, unless I put it on a different album. Yeah, here it is, Luke and Cars. So I'm going to open this Luke and Cars. I was doing a photo book, and I wanted to do lots of editing, um, lots of adjusting, and um, it looks like I opened the wrong one, so I'm going to try this again. All right, let me go down to iPhoto. I'm going to hit the option, and uh, went over on the wrong screen. Let me, let me try that again, Luke and Cars and hit choose. Oh, you know what? It did open the right one. It's showing the import pictures. Remember I said it'll show it's not imported? Because I have a camera plugged in, it is showing uh, all the pictures on the memory card because they're they're not 
part of this album and uh, got a whole bunch of pictures. But you'll notice these uh, albums over here, I have his birthday, uh, and then I have one that's, you know, Cars, uh, Car Love, Car Table, Car Rides, Car Show, um, Car Store. So I made a bunch of albums, you know, Dukes of Hazard, because as I did the photo book, uh, limos, I wanted to be able to organize my pictures. <laughs> There's a lot of categories, all right? Um, Scooby pictures, um, Volo when he was in his little red outfit, Volo when he was in his, he was a little bigger in red, Volo when he was wearing his gray t-shirt, because I did comparisons of Luke growing up. It was a really fun photo book to do. And um, and so, so that's how I did it, all right? So when that when you hold down that option, I should have pointed out to you, you have the option to create a new library. But here's an important thing to know. The default is always going to be the last album you open. Notice that after this Luke and Cars, now it says default. And that's important to remember because if I finish that project, if I open iPhoto without holding down option, it's going to always open the last album that you did. So you may end up importing a camera to the wrong project. So what I do when I was finished working on this car one, or like I'm going to do right now, I'm not going to be done. I'm actually going to hit option, and I'm going to go to my main library, and you'll see I've got a 2004, 2007. I call it locked because I don't edit it, and I've got a 2007 to 2014 live. That's my main album. And so I'm going to choose that, and then once it opens, I can just immediately close it because then I know I'm back to my regular album and next time I open it, it is going to uh, open to this album. And of course it keeps going to this card. I'm going to eject that card and uh, it won't do that again. All right, events is a way that, you know, Apple automatically um, organizes your pictures. I don't use events a lot, um, but it's a lot of fun. There's a faces feature where it does facial recognition. Um, I don't utilize that either. It's probably why it's spinning oh it's probably trying to read 50,000 faces right now maybe I shouldn't have pushed that and um, yeah there it's got a few um, that it recognized um, I don't I don't use that feature you can post directly to Facebook if you want and um, that's kind of fun these are all my Facebook albums and um, so you can see uh, what the different albums are to have on Facebook so if you have any questions feel free to ask me but hopefully this helps give you an overview of how to use iPhoto and how to use multiple libraries and how to manage your albums.